Do you feel stuck? I mean, like, really stuck with your Doberman? Like, you're trying to go from point A to point B with your Doberman's training, and everything's going great, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you just aren't going anywhere. And no matter how many people try to help you, you just can't get past this sticking point with your dog's training. In fact, the more people try and help, the more your issues are just on full display. <laughs> Today, it's not only time that we help you to avoid these sticking points with your Doran, but if you are stuck right now, it's time we hook you up, pull you out, and send you down the road well on your way to a well-behaved Doberman. So, let's get straight to it and let's jump straight into the first sticky situation that Doberman owners find themselves in. Now the first way that people really get stuck while training their Doberman is they get to a point in their training where they get no response from their dog without treats in their hands. Like literally, it's like they have to show their dog the goods, the treats, before they'll get any kind of response to the commands that they've been trained. Dobermans are so insanely intelligent that this is actually a really easy and actually really common trap to fall into while you're training your Doberman. It kind of goes like this. You're, you're giving your dog treats while you're training them. Um, it's a great motivator for a highly food motivated dog like the Dobermans often are. And the dog is so intelligent that they figure out this relation between the treats and what you're asking of them Come way on. better than you ever Come wanted on. them to Arlo, or hoped that they would. And then all of a sudden you find yourself in this position where Arlo. the dog, due to their high intelligence level, Come just on. flat won't respond unless you got treats in your hand. This is a very frustrating spot to be in with a Doberman because you start to feel like you're a slave to your dog and always need to have those treats on you all the time. And God forbid you go somewhere out in public and you forget to bring the treats with you and you're going to have like the most ill-behaved dog around, really embarrassing. So how do you avoid this trap? Well, essentially, you start gradually transitioning off of the treats to other rewards during training. And you do this as soon as a dog starts to have an early grasp on what you're asking of them. Treats are a great motivator in the beginning. It's totally fine to use them when you're first training your dog. In fact, I really like to use a meal time to train a dog. Put the bowl of food behind me and ask a new command or two because your dog's trying so hard to understand what you want. Um, so food is fine early on, but as soon as your dog starts to have that early grasp of whatever command you're training them, then start transitioning to unpredictable rewards. Make it a treat one time. Next time it's praise and reward, like pet, petting them and jumping around saying, good boy, good girl, jumping around. Um, maybe next time it's a favorite toy. You even can have a toy that is specific just for training that only comes out at training time. They only see then. And when that comes out, they know you get super excited and happy. And then that toy goes away until the next good thing they do essentially you're making the rewards completely unpredictable to them and you're this can actually not only make sure that you're not a slave to the treats but it can actually further motivate your dog to do what you want and next time you're out in public you throw out a command to your dog they're not going to sit there and size up in their brain okay well does my owner have a treat okay they do okay is that treat more inch more uh, exciting and fun and interesting than this bush that I'm sniffing over here and they can size it up and they're intelligent enough to do that. Instead, they go, well, I have this bush I'm sniffing over here and I could be distracted or my owner told me to come and who knows, it could be a jackpot, it's a treasure chest, it could be anything. It could actually help further motivate your dog to respond down the road. Another very common sticky situation as doberman owners get into is one day we realize that our dogs don't respond to us on the first command. In fact, it's not until we get firmer and louder and sometimes repeat that command very loud that our dog finally responds. I guess you could get by with this for a while until you decide to go out in public, maybe go do something out with your friends or outside around other people, and you decide to be a good doberman owner and bring your dog with you and include your dog. Well, 
Now what are you going to do when you're around other people and you know your dog won't respond unless you're screaming at them? It's a pretty embarrassing place to be knowing that you need your dog to come to you when you're out in public, but also knowing your dog doesn't normally respond until you scream at them. Arlo, come! Arlo, come here! Now the best way to avoid this trap is just to avoid getting in the habit of yelling at your dog at home to get a response. Now your dog's gonna push the boundaries, especially during kind of that delinquent stage from maybe like 12 weeks of age up to maybe as late as six to eight months of age. They sometimes deliberately will ignore commands just to see what happens and see their place in the pecking order in the house. When that happens, avoid the temptation to just respond by raising your voice to get a response. It's sometimes hard because naturally we're like, he knows that command. Why is he ignoring me? Don't do that, come here. You know, you start yelling louder, come. And before you know it, your dog is gonna just respond only to the last couple yells that are really loud. So instead, say it once. If your dog doesn't respond, for the come command, for example, walk over with a leash, clip it on their collar, walk them back over to you and have them sit. Now they had to come after the first uh, iteration of that command. That's why there's a big following with whisper training. Um, and a lot of Doberman owners do do this where they train their dog in their training sessions at home with whispers only with all their commands. Um, this is said to increase the dog's focus on their owners and then really pay off greatly, of course, when you're out in public and the dog is hyper-focused on you, you can calmly and quietly say, any command and your dog comes right over. Okay, real quick before we get into the last couple ways that Doberman owners really find themselves between a rock and a hard place during their training with their Doberman, I do wanna take a moment to ask you to please hit that subscribe button down below and the bell icon next to it if this video has been any help whatsoever to you at all. And if you're unsure and you'd rather just kinda hold out and wait till the end of this video to see if it's been helpful, I totally get it. I'm the same way. Just don't forget that the subscribe button is down there just floating around waiting for you to click it. All right, let's get on to the next one. Another common area that Doberman owners often get stuck is by accidentally reinforcing leash pulling while they're out on a walk without meaning to or really even knowing that they're doing it. In other words, owners will be out walking their dog when their dog starts really pulling on the leash and yanking on it. Maybe they're trying to sniff a bush just a few feet off the end of the leash and they're really pulling and the owner's like, geez, what's going on? What's your problem? Okay, it's just that bush right there. All right, go ahead. And gosh, is that what you want? Fine. And they just reinforced leash pulling because that dog just received a reward. That, that reward was going to that interesting bush and they just received that reward for pulling hard on the leash. Or maybe you're out for a walk with your doorman and they start pulling just naturally a little bit harder than normal, which they will do because they're gonna test it. And instead of having a hard, well-defined boundary that where you do not allow that to happen, they're gonna start pulling a little harder and you're kind of allowing it without even realizing it. Then you're allowing it a little bit more or uh, worst case, you have somewhere to be. You're taking your dog for a walk and you have to meet Sally. Sally over at the park. And she's waiting for you. She's gonna be there 11 a.m. sharp and you just gotta get there to the park. And now you're allowing, without even thinking about it, more pulling than normal on the leash. I swear guys, taking your doberman for a walk when you have to be somewhere at a strict time is like the worst thing for leash training because even if you just try mentally to overcome it, you're still gonna be inevitably cutting little corners here or there, and you're gonna start reinforcing the habit for your Doberman of pulling on the leash. So how do you avoid getting stuck in this position where your dog's always pulling you on the leash? Well, for one, you definitely never go anywhere where you have a strict time frame and you have to be there at a specific time because you will cut corners. Number two, you go on this walks with a very clear expectation and boundaries as to what you will allow with a pulling and what you will not. If they start to pull too hard, boom, you turn into an anchor, you stop, you demand, they get back in the heel position before you continue the walk. Um, and you take breaks along the way, plenty of breaks, because you do want your dog to be a dog, but also there's time to work. And working time is when they should be in the heel position and it's time to walk. But break time, you're stopped in one place, you let out a long lead on the leash, they can sniff around and be a dog, but there's still even rules there. If they start to pull because they want a bush a couple feet out of the range during break time, you take two steps the opposite direction and guide them back the other way. Make a very clear divisible line between break time and work time. Work time is when you're actually walking and they're in the heel position. It's structured, it's uh, clear cut, and it feels different to the dog than break time. It's okay to have a structured walk with your dog. These are Dobermans, they're working dogs. They love structure and they love having a task to do. So the task or the job to accomplish is a nice, comfortable walk with a short lead right next to you 
as expected. Another huge sticking point for us Doberman owners, especially those of us with a young male Doberman, males seem to be the worst at this for some reason, is not working hard to maintain their focus when they're young during their training sessions. If you let them continue on training sessions where they're really distracted and you're not working hard to maintain that focus, then they're gonna grow up to be an adult Doberman who is more distracted throughout the day and more distracted in training sessions and everything is gonna be more difficult. Training is gonna be more difficult, command training, leash training for sure will be more difficult and a whole lot of other issues will arise. So how do you avoid getting stuck in a position where your Doberman is always distracted during training? Well, first, you train your dog in an area that is as boring and mundane as possible, either an area that is very familiar to the dog or one that has a very small amount of distractions like a plain boring room. Even better yet, if you can do something that uh, fulfills both those requirements, but that'll make the distractions less intense for your dog and easier for them to focus on you. Also, you work really hard to keep your dog's attention with treats, with focus on you, talking to your dog, engaging. You don't want a lot of lulls, a lot of downtime in your training. You really kind of want it kind of a brisk pace to keep the focus on you. And lastly, you stop training if the dog has lost their focus and their attention on you. This is especially important with a young doberman like a puppy. They can only train for so long. Sometimes it might only be like five minutes initially for a five minute training session every day when you get a brand new puppy. And it's gonna take a while for you to work up to having longer training sessions. Next up, getting stuck in a situation where you always have to repeat your commands over and over is a really common one, especially for new Doberman owners. Look, Dobermans, they crave a, a strong, calm, consistent leader, a steadfast leader, and they really thrive off of that. And part of doing that is only saying commands once and expecting a response. So um, if you get in a situation where you find yourself repeating commands, you can actually poison commands to where they're no good anymore and you can't use them anymore. This is kind of a common one, especially for someone with kids in the house where kids might be repeating commands like come, 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 over and over to their Doberman. So how do you avoid this? You avoid this not only, like I mentioned earlier, by one command gets one response, but also by not overusing commands and being very sure not to do that during your training. It can be hard, especially like me with, a, let's say, a three-year-old, for example, um, at home who's yelling, Arlo, come, Arlo, come, 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 Arlo, come. That can poison the come command very quickly. So if you've got kids in the house, be very careful of that. Make sure that one command gets one response. That's the best way to avoid po poisoning the command and finding yourself in a situation where you're out in public and you gotta say commands four or five times to finally get a response from your dog. Raising a Doberman is a lot of fun, but also can be really challenging. But if you take the time to learn how other owners may often get in bad situations, you can do whatever it takes to make sure that you avoid them. So why not take a quick minute and see some of the other videos here on Doberman Planet and see some of these unique challenges and unique training approaches that work so well for this unique breed. Some of these videos should be popping up on your screen right now. Why don't you go ahead and click around on some of them, take a look at these training videos, hopefully they'll help you out. I'll see you next time.